do. All right, hi guys and welcome. I am Mary Poplin with Imagineer Systems and it is my great pleasure to introduce Joel Osis to you guys, a senior flame artist. Let's tell you a little bit about Joel. Joel is currently the senior flame artist at 576 VFX in Toronto, Canada. Prior to that, he was the lead compositor at Engine in Sydney, Australia. You may also know him from his free tutorial sites, joelosis.com and Fishbowl TV. Now, we really want to thank Joel for going out of his way to come on this wonderful webinar that we, we do these monthly webinars and he's been kind enough to be an instructor for us. And we really want to thank him for taking the time to make all his wonderful tutorials and for joining us here today. Uh, one of you lucky attendees will win a free seat of Mocha Pro software as well. Now we are going to do a breakdown. Basically Joel is going to go over what planar tracking is and deciding when to use it. Um, we're going to talk about planar tracking for screen inserts and difficult tracks. We're going to talk about roto masking and G-mask import, 3D camera solving module inside of Mocha and the FBX export, and we'll do live questions and answers. The software we're covering is going to be Mocha Pro, Autodesk Smoke, and Autodesk Flame techniques, though we will not be showing Flame, we'll, we will be showing Smoke. We will be discussing the techniques as to how they can be used in Flame as well. Now I'm going to let Joel take over from here. Hello. Hello and welcome. Thanks. Thanks for the kind introduction, and um, thanks for everyone for uh, tuning in. Uh, let's uh, let's dive right in. I say. Absolutely. All right. So, don't need to save that. All right. So, what this isn't is a kind of a very much a pre-approved uh, demonstration, right? Like you know, we're for our first example. I've got you know something that would be a perfect candidate for plane arc tracking, um, but also would be really easily done inside of Flame or Smoke. You know, like um, this, this whole webinar is about showing why and when, um, because um, hopefully most of you guys use it, um, and if you don't use it, um, hopefully this will kind of educate you as to why you should be using it. So again, this shot here is something that could be tracked in Flame pretty easily. Um, uh, and even easier in uh, Mocha, but uh, that's not why we're here. So behind this, I've got some some footage. If I just uh, do Control Escape again, of a pretty bad, well, pretty good candidate for uh, planar tracking. Um, you know, we've got a zoom. Uh, everything goes full screen. There's reflections to deal with, and uh, quite frankly, this will be a pretty much a big pain trying to do this in uh, smoke uh, or flame. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to press escape and just I'm going to tap now into to Mocha and I'm just going to load up this shot. And he's hidden in here and here we go. All right. I'm just going to press OK to the defaults. Um, obviously the main thing to make sure is your frame rates match. So just to be safe, I'm just going to alt click over here and make sure it's 2997, which is good. So I'm going to tap back over into Mocha and press OK. And I'm just going to call this a new name just so I don't overwrite the working one in case I screw something up. All right, so here's our, here's our source footage and you know, Mocha's nice and easy, friendly timeline. I'm just going to press play and you know, again, just kind of look at what we're going to be tracking. Again, the, the insert bit where the reflections are is really going to be where it would be problematic for a point tracker and that's where planar trackers are really going to kind of help us out for this. So I'm just going to go to the first frame and I'm going to add a spline, I'm going to add an X spline and click there. And the first thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to draw a pretty tight map around the screen itself. So I'm just going to click and click around and then when I want to close my shape, it's just right click and then I'm just going to draw a bounding box and just pull out and that hardens up my edges. So if I press the, the Z key and zoom forward and then X is to pan around, I'm just going to get right in on here and just move these points just so it's not picking up any of the reflection for this track because that's, um, that's going to be key for this. So again, I'm just going to draw around here and then pull back and I'm happy with that. Now, obviously we don't want to track this because if we did and I just track forward, as we get closer this is going to freak Mocha uh, out, not because Mocha is no good but because Mocha is looking for the pattern in here and stuff's changing and 
it's not really ideal. So I'm just going to press escape. Um, you can press escape at any time to so just stop tracking. And now I'm going to draw a shape uh, around the outer to help this out. So I'm going to use this guy, which is add to the current layer, which is uh, add to the X spline. I'm just going to press that. And now I'm going to go around. And I can afford to be pretty loose with this. And again, the whole thing with this is I'm worried about the pattern that's happening, not, not points. It's whatever's happening inside, inside this area. So again, close my shape. I'm going to right click. And then I'm just going to finesse this a bit. And I think that's, you know, that's going to be perfect for what we're doing. Now, to get an idea of what we're doing, if I just turn on mats, and you can see, so everything that's showing up in the mat in the white is where, where we're going to be tracking. So uh, our first shape is actually knockout shape. Um, because again, the reflections that happen in there are going to confuse, confuse Mocha a little. So I'm going to turn on, actually I'll leave perspective off because it's pretty much just a zoom with a bit of shear. And I'm going to pump this up to 90. And I'm going to, because I'm confident with this and hopefully it doesn't burn me, I'm going to go at half res and I'm going to track forward. And you see it does a pretty good job by default. We're just going let it, to let it chug through. Now as it, as it gets to the end, um, it goes full screen and there might be you know, a little bit of uh, discrepancies to kind of fix up, but uh, that's kind of a hit and miss thing as, as is uh, tracking, as I'm sure most of you guys already know. So we'll let this keep chugging. So this is where most of the time uh, flame or smoke might get confused as we get closer because we're getting all these these highlights and little little reflections, especially around around the edges of the traditional kind of point tracker workflow. I mean, even even from a flame perspective, um, there is the nice GMAS tool with uh, the three D tracker that they incorporated from Luster. But again, the thing to remember with that is it's still using the traditional point tracking workflow as opposed to the pattern and the planar uh, way that Mocha does things. So that's going full screen. And I'll be able to check how this went in a sec. I should have zoomed back, but that's that's my bad. That's so okay. So you're cutting away. you're cutting out the um, reflections there because essentially they are uh, Mocha will read them as a different plane um, because they're what they're really reflecting is a plane that's across the screen. So that's exactly right. Yeah. Yes. So it's it's really just to make sure that this track again because obviously because this phone is on that same plane and you know the hands are especially where the fingers are as well, it's just more, more data to throw at uh, Mocha, right? So it's just going to help ensure a nice solid track. Exactly, and so, you can do the same sort of cutout if you have an occlusion in front or anything like that. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't have to be on a single layer. Yeah, it can be the layer above, right? Yes. All right, so yeah, I've just turned off my mats for now, and now the thing I like to do, and what I think is pretty handy, is always turn on, I just like to turn on stabilize as well, and then just kind of pull back probably to the first frame and just press play and stabilizes gives you a really good gauge really quickly on whether the track is solid and you know that feels pretty good my machine's chugging a little but it's uh it's still working so that's the first thing I like to do because uh, again it instant kind of gauge on how the track's going and I'm happy I'm happy with how that's tracked so I'm gonna just zoom back and then just pan around and the next thing I'm gonna do I'm just gonna turn on our little uh, uh, corner corner pin setup, and I'm going to turn on the grid too. So I'm just going to zoom in, and I'm just going to quickly place these. And uh, the good thing as well is we've got the little preview guy. I oh, know, sorry, the zoom guy. Once that updates, and that guy just gives us a little update in the corner as to where we're putting it, so it can be nice and precise. So I'm just going to pop that right there, grab the right one, just pull them over there, and just do the same for the other two. And there we go. And again, now I'm just going to scrub through with stabilize on as well, just to test the quality. And again, that's feeling that's feeling pretty good. So the next step would be, again, that's track that's done pretty much. That's ready to go. Um, the other cool thing as well is writing Mocha. Like again, you could you could set these up in Smoke, right, or Flame as well. Um, you could stabilize. You could you could add little inserts, but the the best bit for me about this is everything is there ready to kind of go. So the next thing I'm going to do is um, on, with that layer selected, we have an option for the insert clip, and we can choose the Mocha logo. And again, just kind of preview the track if I press play, just to kind of get a feel as for how it's going. And again, 
just as a safety, it's not getting rendered in. This is just to make sure what we're sending back is going to work. So I'm happy with that, and I'm just going to press spacebar. And now I'm happy to send this over to, to Flame. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select the layer. Um, and again, when you get more intricate uh, layering techniques happening, you, you want to be more efficient and label things. Um, again, again, it depends if you're a composer like me. You usually leave it to the last minute, and then it's all messy. But what I'm going to do now is just go to track. And because I haven't um, adjusted the track, and I'm happy with the track by default, I can just stay in the track and then export track data. If I did do tweaking to the track after in this next tab, that's when I would want to export the tracking data from here, just, just to be uh, sure if you ever do change something out here. So I'm going to go back to my track and then go export tracking data. Right, so, so adjust track is what um, fixes a, a, an adjustment over the top of the track. It's there to fix drift or complicated tracks. Yeah, it's, um, you know, like as, as, as great as Mocha is, you know, there's, there's no such thing as a, a one-trick pony kind of shot. There's always, there's always going to be a shot where you're going to have to have a, a bit of intervention. And yeah, that's, um, that's why that's there. And you know, there's, there's always times that will, will come up <laughs> more, more often than not. So by default, um, as you see, there's a million different exports. But what we're going to use is the Autodesk stabilizer data. Um, you can do the point tracker one as well, but I'm going to use the stabilizer for this example. And I'm just going to click Save. And I'm just going to put this on my desktop and call this track one and hit save. Now I'm going to tab back into smoke and just open up our guy here, which is our source footage we just tracked. And I'm just going to go effects and then create connect effects and just swipe to the left and zoom in. Now the first thing I want to do is just set this up. So I'm just going to grab an action and just drop him in. And then for this uh, insert, we can have fun and put a little product plug for Mocha, right? <laughs> they didn't make me do this either. I'm just joking around. Hey, uh, but we love it. <laughs> so here we go. Like I've got just a screen grab of the Mocha website, and it's super high res. I'm just going to click on action and go control N, and then just shift alt, kiss him in. And then if we look at schematic, we see we've just got the image. F4, obviously, it's oversized. So now this. This, uh, for the Flame users too, this, this has changed. In Flame 2014, obviously there's a whole new bunch of cool surfaces. There's, um, there's a perspective um, warper, which is also great, um, and the trackable extended by cubics. Um, for now, for smoke, bilinear will work, but I mean, the, the same thing for bilinear will apply to perspective in Flame as well. So it's, it's just, uh, like you guys know, the way perspective is, uh, maintains the image fidelity a lot better and can do a lot of other cool things as well. So I'm just going to go to bilinear and then go to my vertices and go to stabilizer. And I'm just going to, this is where we're going to load, load everything in from Mocha. So I'm just going to go load and then I'm just going to go to my desktop and there's track one. I'm just going to click him and you see everything's come through. I'm just going to zoom in and just scrub through and you see everything's doing exactly what it should. So I'm just going to return out of that and then just press F4 to have a look at my results. My computer's chugging, sorry, F4. F4 is not working, that's fun. Well, it's the law of demos. <laughs> All right, here we go. Take two, F4, no. All right, I'm gonna view action results. If it lets me. All right, so we're back here, and again, if I add here at the main level and press F4, you can see if I scrub through, now we have our basic screen insert, right? Now, again, that was quick and easy to get in, and, you know, there's lots of different ways we can use and manipulate this data. I mean, the first thing that we kind of want to do is obviously line this up, and that's kind of unique to Smoke and Flame, how these guys are kind of, the offsets are edited. Um, the other thing to note is in uh, Smoke, it's using the, if I go into here and double click, uh, the Edit Offsets tool, which if this guy's selected and in the Media Hub, in the Media Panel, sorry, and then I press F1 and we zoom in, uh, offsets aren't showing up, which is fun, so I'll just toggle it on and off, and then Alt double click, F1, and our offsets are hiding, which is fun. But for this example, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab this guy over here and 
add in just before that a 2D transform and then view this guy in context. So back click says context, double click and press one. And I'll go into two up here, so alt two. And I'm just gonna go to this guy and I'm just gonna crop it. So I'm gonna go to custom size and zoom down and maybe go all the way to pull the width in and then pull the height down, height up, all the way up. And there we go. So now if I look at the output and press F4, this is another another thing unique to uh, Flame and Smoke, which is kind of annoying, is if you do do this, you do have to reapply the, the data. So I'll prove a point really quick. So if I throw this guy away and throw him in and just quickly change it to bilinear vertices and load, and then we load track one again, and now you'll see it's matched back in. And unfortunately, it's one way. It's just the way that uh, the, the module works at the moment as it stands. So if we could edit offsets, it would be good, but we can't. Um, for whatever reason, it's just they're not showing up right this second. But again, that's, that's the, a really quick, basic kind of way of just bringing that data in and seeing that it actually, you know, it tracks good and it, and it plays nice. Um, you know, we won't go into a comp on this. Obviously, it's just kind of showing how we get it in and out. So I'm going to go uh, back to, I'll be back in smoke, and I'll just jump out. Um, and if we go over to the left, and then we go to our next little area, which is going to be difficult corner pins. So I'm just going to open up this footage and just scrub through. And you see that's our, our screen we're supposed to track, which is you know, potentially there goes your weekend kind of thing. Um, again, this is something that I would never attempt uh, kind of doing by hand in, in Flame and Smoke because it is so such a problematic shot with reflections we got here. Um, luckily, we have these little markers as well, but I mean, there's so many little things that can go wrong with this shot, and it, it would be a, I don't know, I hope you guys agree, it would be a long, long process to, uh, to kind of get this going. Um, so again, we're going to track this guy in uh, Mocha and show you guys how easy it is compared to uh, kind of doing it all in smoke. So I'm going to do a new new project. I don't want to save that. And I'm just going to grab that guy in. And there's my footage. And again, I'd just like to double check for housekeeping that I am working at the right frame rate, 23, 976. Cool. All right, so there we are. I'm going to press OK and just change the name again. And here we are. So, first thing is to kind of study study the movement, see what's going on. Like, again, oh, you're right. So, Mocha, right? This the things that's going to happen in here is again the same principles that apply to the last shot we did. Now, again, because we have this reflection going on over the front, we have to figure out a, a solution to kind of track this. Because again, if I just do put a plane in by default and, and right click and just kind of uh, match these guys out going into select mode and just kind of get a nice kind of shape and you know turn on perspective because we obviously have a lot and say 90 and press enter and then we start tracking forward and see it's all right here it's doing all right and pretty soon it's going to get confused and we're going to start to drift it's actually doing surprisingly well considering there's no holdout bit for the the center so well, the reason in. it does that actually is because Mocha is actually looking from um, frame 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 4. And if there's data that's changing quickly enough, Mocha actually ignores that data in order to give you the planar track. So that's why. Well, that's, that's great. So it's, it's compensating for us. Yes. It's, it's mostly looking at those four points that are on there and the edges that are on there, and it's saying that those are consistent, and it's ignoring the inconsistencies. So there we go. That's, that's tracked it pretty well. Um, I'm actually surprised because uh, I was going to actually draw a holdout shape for this guy. So again, um, I'm just going to test it out. So I'm just going to turn on my little, my little grid guy and my little corner pin guy and just, just put these in a nice spot somewhere here and put that there. Well, the surface tool is the real test because the spline doesn't always the spline isn't always 100% honest with you on what the track looks like because the, they're actually the spline is a child of the track, not the other way around. Cool. That's that's good to know. All right, so if I just kind of push in there, put that over there, and we turn on stabilize as well, and just going to press play. You see, 
it's actually not doing too bad a job. That's, again, um, trying to track that in Smoke or Flame or, or any other comp tool for that matter, I, don't, I, do, I just don't see why you would because especially these last bits where it just freaks out. And again, like uh, super, super easy. I'm going to turn off the stabilized preview and just, um, again, just with that layer selected, I'm just going to go to insert clip and I'm just going to put on a grid as well and then turn off that because the grid's a nice tell as well. And I'm just going to turn off overlay so we can just kind of concentrate exactly on the image. I'm just going to press play and we're getting, besides a little drop frame at the end, we're getting, you know, a little bit of discrepancies on the corner here. But for the most part of this, this is doing exactly, exactly what we want. So that's a good thing. And again, um, a little shape and a few clicks. Um, again, the difference between uh, a couple hours and almost a couple days sometimes. So again, for getting this data out, I'm going to go export tracking data. I'm going to use stabilizer again and just going to click save. And I'm going to call this track two and tap back into smoke and the old connect effects, control swipe to hide that, and I'm just going to again pull out an action, drop it there, and for this guy, I'm just going to zoom in really quick, and I'm just going to throw out a colored frame and just going to switch it to color bars, just as a different example. Uh, color bars, because that's where I'm originally from. I'm going to go control N, and drop that guy in, and again, the same process, I'm just going to switch it over to bilinear, and go to vertices, and then stabilizer, and load and track two is what we want and again that's where it all came in and it translates very nicely which is uh, always a good thing um, the other thing too that uh, just as a heads up for some of you guys when I was working because I originally started on Monet um, back when there was Mofex and Moki I think it was uh, well yeah that's where I learned very quickly that uh, aspect ratio is very important as well when you're going to and from uh, Monet or Mocha uh, if you have that out, your track's going to look wrong, but again, it's just a thing to remember before you go in. Just always maintain and remember what your source is because uh, that, that can be a little gotcha and make you think that the track's not working. Right, and it's like that in every, um, every program, really, that you use Mocha, and you need to make sure the frame rate, the aspect ratio, and the actual image size uh, match up to your original comp. I have a question for you, though. What version of Smoke are you using right now? Um, right now, I'm on the one you just download straight from the website. So it's the 2013 trial. So um, let me see. Where would it be hiding? Um, it's in there. Because we had some users asking whether or not the workflow would be the same in the 2014 version. Are you talking about the Linux? The Linux one then. Um, for bringing stuff in, the, the only difference in the Linux version, um, it, it applies to Flame as well. Um, when you're when you're going in here into action, uh, obviously uh, surface there would be a perspective one. Um, bilinear I think is still in there for legacy, but there's a little perspective one that you that you load up, and then in vertices there would still be the stabilizer guy. That's exactly where you you load it in. So from a from a workflow thing, it's going to be exactly the same, um, except going from bilinear to perspective. So yeah, um, perfect, nice thank and easy. You. Yeah, thank you. All right, so. You know, here's our, here's our basic uh, little monitor comp, and again, that came across really nice and easy. And uh, just, again, just, it blows me away how that even tracked that. So just to, um, just to illustrate a point, um, I think it'd be nice just to try and track this just for a second, because I highly doubt it would be nice and easy. So I'm just going to chuck in the same setup and do the same thing. I'm going to switch from flat to bilinear. Um, another thing to note too that some people might have come across um, that's kind of annoying, um, this is the good tracked one obviously. Um, in my head I always thought, okay I've got this track now, I can just switch it over to extended by cubic and then I can you know, subdivide and tweak stuff, but this is what happens when you, uh, when you do that. Um, it's just the way the software is. Um, I haven't tested this yet with, um, uh, we're on Flame 2014 here. But I haven't tested the, the going from this to the, the extended by cubic. But I wouldn't be surprised if you could because in the new by cubics in Flame 2, um, there are trackable individual points as well. So I see no reason why you couldn't select the points on the by cubic and then go into the vertices and load as well. Because again, they're all trackable now. So swipe left and let's have, have a look at 
worst case scenario. So I'm going to press F4, go to stabilizers, and now I'm going to, whoops, going to let my computer think for a second. I'm going to do reset because I just screwed up the shape. I'm just going to hold control and just try and see how painful this might have been. So I'm just going to go over here to the right one and the third one. This one's kind of get away with there and tracker four can be here. And I'm just going to change these to gang and and I'm going to go to backward and click analyze. And it's, yep, there we go. Okay. So, I mean, it did an all right job for the most part. Um, if I press shift, I can just see where my, my keys are up to as well. Um, but it's the little things here, once we get into things that go off screen, like you, get, like, like you guys know, like the new offset feature in, uh, you know, the new Flame 2014 is great. But again, we're still, we're still relying on a, a point uh, a point point based solution. So if I jump out, um, besides me laying my, my points out wrong, it's still not I don't know, it's just for me it's just why waste all that time because again like uh, a lot of the time you're building by the hour and again you can just kind of pop out pop back in and you know the the grunt work's done for your your, your main composite and track. Right. Well, the reason the reason that is is because what planar tracking is actually doing is you're drawing a spline and you're actually tracking the motion of every single pixel inside that spline up to a percentage that you define. Um, instead of looking for small points and features, it's actually tracking a texture, an entire texture. And so it doesn't matter if the data is blurry. It doesn't matter um, if the data is low contrast. It's still just holding onto that texture. So that's why you get a better track. And that's why I love it. <laughs> yeah. All right. So I'm not even going to go further with this guy because that just kind of makes me feel sick and depressed because I knew if I had to do this in Flame or Smoke, I'd be a little upset because I'd lose a weekend. So I'm just going to throw that away, never think about it again, and I'm going to jump out. And again, uh, this, this one's not about the, the finesse and the, the final techniques. It's literally an example of how easy it is to get these guys in because um, obviously there's a lot of things you have to do to, to make this shot work overall. All right, I'm going to swipe over here and then go left, and we're going to have a look at some rotomasking, rotoscoping techniques. So, some tasty looking footage. Um, you know, obviously, I don't know about you flame guys, but I highly would think that you have had a stab at having to paint in some little details on food and making, you know, food work, um, little imperfections and so on. Um, Again, let's use this as an example. And again, if I alt click, I'll just make sure the duration's right. Um, you know, producer wants this guy, the little bacon bit, to kind of be you know nicer. Um, the bread looks kind of lame. You know, the chips don't don't have that nice feel. Um, again, if I open this as a sequence, and just swipe to the left, and I'll just throw away my audio. Um, again, you could uh, you could you know use the traditional kind of uh, I go to color corrector, um, and then stop the render and go to editor and just press control escape to get rid of that weird overlay. I'm going to go to color warper. I mean we, we of course we have our selective tools we can use you know and we can get a key and it's just on that area but again there's always going to be that point where you have to get into finer detail and if I go to mat again it's pretty noisy as well by default. Of course there's things we can do to treat that but again why, um, why screw around and mess with keys especially noisy keys like that which uh, would just be again you can always get there in this it just depends on how quick you want to get there so sure. again, I'm gonna... can I ask you a question right quick Joel yeah, um, of sorry, sorry to interrupt you but can you apply mocha data to extended by cubic um, or only bilinear um, uh, tracking data um, inside of in smoke? in in new flame I'm pretty sure it's possible now yeah uh, in smoke as it stands uh, no it's you'd have to set up some kind of a like expression through an axis say linked to that point but it's it's a kind of little dance just to just to do that at the moment which is a really good thing of why the new extended by cubic and the new um, the new UV kind of workflow in um, flame is really good um, and I, I don't know but I can't see why that wouldn't trickle its way into smoke eventually. I guess um, I guess we just have to wait till nab and, and pray. <laughs> okay, thank you. All right, so I'm gonna load up that what I like to call product porn without you know pissing anyone off, sorry. Oh that's okay. <laughs> save. And I'm gonna go choose and I'm gonna go to our little fillet and open. 
And again, by default, Merck is pretty good as well at, at guessing, right? Like it's guessed frame rate pretty well, pretty, it's a, again, but it's always good to, to double check. So I'm just gonna press okay. And again, there's our, there's our nice food. And again, we gotta think about this. Uh, well, I mean, my, again, coming from point tracking, you think, okay, if I'm gonna get rid of that guy or, or tidy this up, I'd maybe do a point here, a point here, a point here. Again, we're, we're working with planes, right? And patterns within the planes. So I'm just gonna scrub again to get a sense of what I got to work with. And again, it's not exactly the worst case scenario, but again, these, these things come up with, with food especially. So by default, I can see straight away, you know, somewhere around here is gonna be a good candidate. And then uh, we'll use some uh, track linking to uh, do a tighter shape after, which is a really, really handy feature as well for, for G-masking and rotospines. So again, I'm just gonna go and add a little spline. And I'm just gonna draw a shape just along here. Uh, click there when it lets me and click here and just right click and just pull that out around there. And I'm gonna turn on perspective for this. And for this, I'm just gonna try 50 because there seems to be a lot of detail in there anyway. So again, I'm parked at the first frame and I'm just gonna click track forwards. And it's tracking good, really good. Chugging through. And again, this is just, again, something that could be, could be done in flame with the, the G-Mask uh, tracker, you know, the new G-Mask one in action. But it's, again, it's using a completely different technique. It's, it's the G-Mask, because it came from Luster, uh, that tech is, is exactly like, um, you know, Resolve would be where it's using 3D to, to you know, to work at translation, rotation, and scale. Whereas the, the great planar tracker, as you guys can see, once my computer stops lagging, does a great job of getting a really smooth track. And again, I'm just gonna turn on that. I'm not gonna worry about setting up a, a grid for that because we're gonna use it for roto eventually. So again, if I scrub through, you see that's locking pretty nice and I'm happy with that. So I'm just gonna go up here and double click and I'm just gonna call this meet track. And the other thing to note, because I'm going to add a new layer, um, and because I'm happy with this track, there's these little cogs up here, so, you know, the obvious one is the visibility. And then this guy is whether you want it to uh, be tracked once we add a new shape, or if, if, you know, every time you push this button from here on in, if you have this cog still on, it's going to keep recalculating the track. Um, that's right, Mary, right? Yeah, the, um, the COG is basically the action item in Mocha, so if you are in the track tab, the COG will continue to track. If you are in the render tab for, like, say, the insert or remove tool, um, that means that it will also render. So you always want to turn that off once you're done with your track so that you don't blow over your data. Cool. I also believe in locking it because um, sometimes you're buried under work and, you know, you you basically forget that you need to turn this off. Sold. All right, I've locked it and the COG is off. So if we, again, if we scrub through, now is where we're gonna figure out where we're gonna draw our shape just for this kind of area. So again, as with any roto stuff, we just scrub through and see the, the best point. And right at the start is where we're gonna have a, a good example. So again, I'm just gonna add a new spline and press X spline. I'm just gonna zoom in, holding Z, and that didn't work. I'm gonna zoom in, there we go. And I'm just gonna click here. And I actually really like the X spline tool itself and I kind of wish other, other software providers had them because it's, um, it's a lot more elegant than these ones for me. Um, I'm gonna right click to close it. Give it a second and then just zoom out and pull this down. Um, and I mean that in the way once, I'm, once I've kind of tidied this up and I zoom in, go back to select mode. It's once I've got a nice kind of shape. Um, for me, I always find myself fiddling with, with these lines, but I just love that we can just draw, draw a box around these guys and just pull in and instantly it kind of softens the edge. And it's, I've always found this is really good for organic shapes or even like more, I guess, circles and stuff like that. I've just found it really easy to manipulate splines um, using X splines. I mean, I know in competitors tools, some of them have X splines as well, but yeah, I, I love X splines. All right, I'm just gonna Again, tidy this up. Again, this is totally up to you how, how far you push all these things, as always. Um, pull it in there. And again, that looks good, but now the next thing we want to do is we need this to be associated with our awesome track we already had. So I'm going to, just for housekeeping, 
double click on him and I'm going to call this uh, Nate Roto and just press enter and now what I want to do is uh, again each each layer that's ever that's uh, selected in Mocha uh, has its own independent uh, controls just down here for layer properties and for track properties as well obviously but all I want to do and again it's super easy is I'm just going to go link to track and right now it's linked to itself I'm going to change it to meet track and the beauty of this is now if we uh, scrub through you see now it's taken on all that tracking data and obviously the left isn't lined up but we've got uh, about 90% of the way there for free because of that nice um, that nice track. So uh, what I like to do now is I'll I'll kind of go because we've already set a keyframe obviously on the first frame we did um, and it lines up good. So I'm just going to scrub to where the most drift happens somewhere somewhere around here and I'm just going to just draw a little box around these guys and pull them in and somewhere there and pull up here. Uh, the other thing to note too, there's um, a little show transform tools which is a cool little thing as well, transform box, and my computer's lagging, sorry about that, I'm just going to scrub through, and you see that's maintaining the side all right, you know, it's, once we kind of do a little bit of blur after the fact, it'll be good as well, and I'm just going to scrub through to the end, I'm just going to do the same thing, I'm just going to draw over here, and you'll see this little bounding box updates as well, and I'm just going to scrub to, once it pops up, just pull this over here again, clean it right. up. We've really improved our roto tools quite a bit um, and sped oh, up the workflow. They're a lot, a lot better. Not that they were horrible. No, they were good before, but now they're just like, you can turn on stabilize and roto, um, like on the stabilized shape so that it's always within the screen, and it just saves you tons and tons of time. Yeah, it's, it's become way more efficient. And even, you know, even little things like um, the things I really like are like your little preview things, so you can do the gamma up, gamma down, especially for mats and masks is really handy. Um, and that's another question I had, Mary, is... If I um if I have these guys uh, say I'm, I've got it blown out like this and I do the track is this purely a display thing or is it is it is it uh, um that should be for the display but if you want to actually change it to change what Mocha is looking at you can go into the then clip tab clip. yeah, yeah in the clips space, yeah. in the clip tab you mess with the color space and you can turn it to linear or log um I like to turn it to log and just make it super crunchy if the if the footage has been overly color corrected another thing you yeah. can do if the footage has been overly color corrected is you can also use um, instead of using the um, the luminance input channel in your track tab, you can use mm -hmm. auto channel and what auto channel actually does is it will um, it will look at the R, G and B channels individually and it will try to find the best, uh, most crunchy data that Mocha will like best um, out of all of those channels and pick for you. Well, that's, that's good to know as well because yeah, so, so, so this guy purely is display, right? Yes. Up here. Yeah, cool, cool. All right, so... I'm going to scrub through and select that guy as well. I'm going to turn off the visibility of him as well. And I'm just going to turn on mats just to kind of preview this. And again, it's just for this, this side bit. I could go further into detail here, but you know, that's, that's doing what I want for that. I'm happy with the results I'm getting. And the other thing I'm going to do really quick is um, Mocha also has its, you can set edge width and you can add uh, motion blur based on the, the movement it gets to, which it does a good job of. Um, but again, we're going to be doing this in, uh, you know, we're going to be using these G-masks in, in flame and smoke. So the thing is, you know, like anything, uh, you know, you can always track something really well. You can always do something really well, but it's the, the back and forth. It's always the passing of data that uh, can be a pain. Um, more, more with 3D stuff or in 3D tracking, but this is where it actually does um, quite a good job. So if I'm in a Uber key, so if I had some keyframes and I turn on our little uber key guy and set our edge width to say five and press set. Um, that's going to apply, if I undo that now, that's going to apply that overall. Uh, right, Mary? It's like a... a yeah, little... the uber key is like an offset to what you've already done. Um, now, you had auto key on when you set those keys, so um, it's not going to do it. But um, basically okay. what it is, is an over, it's an overall offset um, to whatever you've already done. So, like, let's say you do a roto shape around somebody's head, and you've decided that you need actually one or two more pixels, um, like, across the board of extra space to give yourself more feathering to work with. You would turn mm -hmm. on uber key, and then you would adjust the shape and it will adjust it over time. It's a ripple edit, essentially. Okay, okay. All right. So I'm happy, I'm happy with that, that shape. And then the other thing is I'm thinking if they're going to want that nice and you know, juicy, they'll probably want this to look a little bit nicer too. So again, because 
we're in Mocha and it's nice and easy, I'm just going to turn off the visibility of that guy just for a second. And I'm going to quickly track the plane of the, the bread. Again, it's super easy. I'm just going to draw a loose spline and just go along here, right click and just turn off my mats. And again, the thing is I'm not going to worry about my placement of my spline because these are just for G masks and I'm going to turn on perspective because there's a lot. And I'm going to up it a bit as well because we've got a bit of uh, depth of field. But that's the other thing to note too is there's, there's you know, there's an obvious fall off of in focus to out of focus. And this is where it gets handled really, really well. And I'll pump that up to 90 and I'm just going to track boards as well. Um, the other thing to note, and correct me if I'm wrong, please, Mary. Um, sure. Minimum pixels used is uh, if, uh, if something is like a very uh, similar pattern, say like, a, you know, something that's white or doesn't have a lot of variation, sometimes it's, it's better to use a lower value, like towards 30 maybe, or, or would you pump that all the way up? Um, when you have a similar uh, texture that you're trying to track, um, I, I tend to actually pump the, the value up. What I tend to recommend that people don't do is I don't recommend people track things like grids or tracking markers that are 100% uniform because Mocha what Mocha is actually doing is it's looking for the texture again. So you want to track as, as non-uniform things as possible. Uh, luckily, this bread that you're tracking actually is a, almost a completely random texture, so you don't need to worry about that. But for things like um, for things that are low detail, um, you're going to want to pump the percentage of pixels that you're tracking up quite a bit. Okay. But also you need to think of it about in terms of the amount of pixels you're tracking. So if you're tracking... If you're tracking a shape and it's a larger shape, that is going to be more accurate just by virtue of being a larger shape. And if you then, then you could compensate. Yes, exactly. Okay. Perfect. You can also track similarly moving objects. Like, don't feel like just because an object is is by itself um, that you can't find a similar plane if you run out of tracking data for that object. Yep. Yep. All right. So I've got my my bread track, and again, I'm just going to quickly do a little little mask just to make it a little bit more tight around the bread and right click and again I'm just gonna draw a little circle around him with the spline selected and just pull along sorry my computer's a little laggy still and there we go that's feeling better it's nice and loose and again I'll just select that pull this guy out a bit and we'll do what we did before and I'm gonna link it to the bread track and once it lets me there we go and if you scrub through, you see it's doing a pretty good job. Again, we can tighten up and add a couple keyframes. Maybe if I go here and I just set a key there. Give it a sec. And scrub to the end. And I'm just going to grab these guys just over here and pull them along. Once it lets me. My computer's freaking out, sorry. I'll just undo that and then grab that and it's not letting me. But anyway, we'll move on to now how do we get these out of here and into smoke. So because we want to have these separate, um, you can you can multi-select these too. So I could select our meat roto and then uh, call that the bread roto. Your, um, your auto key is off so you're unable to adjust your points. That's what it was. All right. I do that all the time. It's a really easy thing to, to miss. But it's, it's a good thing to point out so that you know it's, Mocha's not broken when you can't move your points. It's probably <laughs> that you've just turned off auto key. It's like uh, almost 90% of the time it's the operator. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. So now I can, yeah, I've up, offset them. And for this argument's sake, I'm happy with that. And again, Mocha, we could select both of these, um, both of these roto things and export them together. So I could go to file export rendered shapes and uh, actually not as shapes that's where if we wanted to actually render these from Mocha as well so Mocha has a nice um, motion blur uh, built into so you know you can export uh, black and white tips or depending on your workflow personally for me I like to keep everything editable um, as much as I can within the smoke of the flame um, so I'll go cancel for that but then I'll go to track down the bottom here and go to export shape data now, thing to note is it's saying selected layer. Um, in this case, I 
I want I don't want to bring them both in because one of them is going to be blurred slightly different to the other. So really quickly, I'm just going to go cancel. And for this one, I'll just go meet Roto first, and I'll go export. Leave it on selected shape. And again, there's a uh, flame nuke uh, shake. Poor, poor old shake got end of life, and I'm going to go back to this side and go to flame, and I'm going to go save. And I'll put this on the desktop, and it'll be called meat roto. And we'll do the same really quick for the bread roto, and export shape data, and select the layer again, and save. And there we are, bread roto. Now again, if we tab back into smoke, and I just swipe to the left, and we open that up, and we do effects, create connect effects. And again, it's just as easy to get the shapes in. Um, I'm not going to do it in action. You could do it in action with the key here, the modular key here, but I personally hate that thing. So I'm just going to throw that away, and I'm going to pull out a G mask. So I'm just going to press G and Shift Alt, double click and press F1. And it's as simple as going to load and going to my directory where I saved it to the desktop. And I'm going to go first with the meat rotor. And you see it's come through by default. And if you scrub through, and actually press F4 as well, just to see. And I'll just press Control i to turn off icons. And you see it's locked good. Pressing F1 and then turning icons back on. That's locked in there nice and good. <clears throat> and again, by default, uh, Tracer is on. <clears throat> and Tracer doesn't behave like you, you used to um, with the normal Tracer. Um, if I had, had this selected, uh, you, the softness is what you're used to, where you can just do the global offset. Um, again, uh, sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not. Um, but with Tracer, it's for whatever reason, um, if I do Shift Tab, we see that it's baked in. Like usually, um, I'll just quickly show an example of what I'm talking about. I'll just press F1, and I'm just going to draw in a shape and turn on Tracer. See, Tracer by default will give us the per point uh, variable edge feathering. Uh, that doesn't come through. Um, I might have been how I baked. I'll, I'll quickly tab over and make sure it's not how I baked these in. Like if I do set, uh, go back to here and go select our guy here. And then if I go to uh, edge points on this, and just for this example, I'm going to pull out. So now we've got a nice smooth, if I turn on mats, got a nice smooth and turn off my little guy there. We've got a nice smooth mat now. And if I turn that on, you can see what it's doing. So I'm going to re-export this and just see how that comes across to into uh, into Mocha. So with Meet Roto selected, export shape, and I'm going to save again and Meet Roto. I'll just call it two, and then tab back into Smoke. So we have a user that wants to know: Is there a way to unbake the tracer? Um, that's something I've I've been struggling to to come to terms with too. I don't think there is. I think it's it's just it's linear the way it comes in, and it's kind of crappy. But I blame the old uh, API. Um, of this old GMask, because ideally uh, Smoke would have the new GMask in action, and ideally we could load these into the GMask um, within the, the action. So as it stands for now, um, I don't. If there's a way, I'd love to know it, but I don't think there is. So I'm just going to grab the Meet Roto 2 GMask, and you see, yeah, it doesn't it doesn't come across with that. That's where you would either render it out from there. The 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 trick that you usually can do um, with GMask is if it was, if I did have a default shape and I did have tracer on, is you can always select them and then you can usually do the scale points um, right here. And now with that selected, I could scale the outer and scale the inner uh, globally. But for whatever reason, um, when we try that here with um, scale points selected, and I do that, it's just scaling overall and again, access to the edges, uh, access to the edges is working, so there is a way. Yes, uh, um, also, you know, you can always, if you really don't want to use Mocha's roto tools and you want, you should be able to hook the tracking data up to a roto shape inside of Flame or Smoke and then use um, Flame or Smoke's tools from there, should you not? Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it just depends, like, uh, it depends how you, how you do it, like, if you were going to link this to, uh, then, you, then you'd use like um, the export shape, then you'd do, uh, if I am in Mocha, and it was here, then you wouldn't do the, the shapes, then you'd do the tracking data, but probably go to the, the discrete corner, uh, point tracker data. So if I save that, and I'll call this meet uh, axes, right, for this example. So if I tab over, um, this is where 
again, if you didn't want to use uh, the, the Roto tools for inside of Mocha, and I press G, and then connect him up, and I do a quick, quick little mask along here. Right. My only point is there's more than one way to skin a cat. You can still use oh, the, yeah. the awesome Mocha data. Um, if you're really married to your workflow inside of, um, inside of Flame where you really like those, um, the G masks, uh, you can always drive it with the tracking data. I just wanted people to know that there is that option. Obviously, I prefer Mocha's Roto tools, but you know, it just depends on what your preference is for your workflow. Yeah, it's it's exactly that. There's like you could you could bring it in. I again, I just I like drawing the way I can draw shapes in here and how they come across. Um, but again, if it all depends on yeah yeah your workflow. So I'm just gonna go back into smoke and I'm just gonna zoom in and go back to one of the ones. If I go F1, that's the one I adjusted our softness on. And if I press F1 again, there's our good our good guys. So I press space by D and just delete these guys and throw this guy away. And again, I want to do the same thing for the bread guy, so I can just go all nodes G and just drag him in and connect him up again and press F1. And again, I'm just going to load up my bread rotor and you see there it is over there, chilling. And again, uh, really easy to kind of, again, depending on how you usually work, if I do zoom in on this and then this one, which I didn't know, which uh, I only found out about a while ago, which is where you just hold control and shift and they'll pipe in. Um, now, you, again, you can set this up for your color correction workflow. So you could have that guy with the mat being fed by the G mask. And if I dupe that guy, drop him in. And then, again, if I view that guy as context and double click on that color corrector and press 1, and my computer's thinking. There we go. And if I just up the satch to 150, you see we can make it really gross. But again, um, something that is really easy to kind of get inside your workflow. Um, I, I, I use it a lot for GMAS personally um, and for tracking. And uh, it's mostly just a, a case of, you know, whether I have clients with me sometimes. Sometimes I prefer not to jump out. But again, it, it all depends if I know it's going to be a lot easier just to to bang it out in, in Mocha. All right. Now I'm going to go back into the desktop. And this guy here is another, another good example, um, if I open this up, of just G-masking again and when you might have to, you know, this is an example where if you were a purist that wanted to keep it all in smoke for G-mask, this is where you might not want to. Um, so if I scrub through, and there's a dead frame at the end, so I'm just going to press T and trim it back. And there we are. I'm just going to go in here and then create connect effects. And I'm going to just grab a 2D transform, and I'm just going to double click on there and go to stabilizer, turn that on, and enter in. And you know, say we're going to track somewhere here. Um, this is this is from as far as I'm concerned, a point tracker's kind of worst nightmare. So if I animize forward. See, it's getting the general motion, but there's still a lot of jitter coming through, so I'll let that track all the way through. And if I press F4, and then press, go back to start and press play. There's still, there's still a bit of jitter, and again, if I jump out, I could always, there's, like you know, there's, there's tools in here to, you know, I could average this and smooth out the curve, but again, I, I'm a firm believer in you, you get the track right to start with. So, this is another example of where Mocha's can be uh, quite useful. So I'm just going to go new project, leave that at defaults, and we're going to choose that same footage. So back in here, and I'm just going to load it up and go OK, and I'll override it. All right. So again, because we're tracking the the, the whole thing as a whole, it's going to be so much easier than than points. So again, I'm just going to draw a rough shape for this this area, and kind of keep it on the same plane. So I'm going to do it like that because this guy exists a little bit differently even though it's pretty pretty XY the move. And I'm just going to go, actually I don't, I'm going to keep perspective off for that. And I'm going to say this at 70 because I'm not sure if maybe more would be good or not. So I'm just going to track it forward and track it forward. And you see it's pretty locked on there, even though we've got all that rain going through there. 
and I'll give it a little while and let it update but just to prove a point and if I press stop and I'll just quickly set my my out pointer there and then just fit it up and again if we turn on stabilize and we just press play you see that's locked on there really really good and again um, the fact that once we have that point sorry about that there we go once we have that again it's super easy to go in there and when your computer doesn't freak out on you and you can draw a spline normally it is really easy just to draw a nice spline that can relink if I right click and then just tidy these guys up all the way down and just go I want to link that to my nice track and again it's all there for free and nice and easy and again it's as easy to do export shape data just like that so for the next example I control swipe over here we're gonna have a look at some lens lens woes so if I open this up so this example footage if I press fit um, press play and I'll just turn on loop and press play is for me feels very 5D there's obvious lens distortion but then as well there's obvious right towards the end some what looks like rolling shutter which I'm pretty positive is rolling shutter. So if I scrub through, um, again, it's a short clip, but it's a good example of how, how Mocha can handle lens stuff. So I'm going to tab over into Mocha and just start a new project really quick. And oh, I don't want to save that. So I'm just going to grab my lens guy, open him up, and again, just scrub through a Mocha. Now, I'm taking into consideration if, again, we... It, because it is tracking patterns and the, the pattern within this this screen, probably this guy's not going to help. But I mean, maybe maybe it'll be fine. Um, off the bat, I'm going to see what it looks like just by using the analogy I've usually used for all shots in Mocha. I'm just going to do what I did with the other shot, which is just a nice rough shape around the edges of the screen, and give it a bit a bit of room. Turn on perspective for sure, and again, just up this to around 90, and just press enter. And now I'm going to track forwards, and we'll see how we go. <clears throat> Joel, are you covering importing multiple mats today? Um, I can. If, if uh, I'll do that right after this. Sure. If we could do that, that would be wonderful. Thank you. All right. That's going through, and it's actually not doing too bad a job. Um, I thought it might get confused with this stuff here, um, but maybe it did. That's the thing. The, the splines look good, but maybe once we turn this guy on, and we go to the first frame and just quickly line him up. Line him up. There. And we scrub through. Turn on grid as well. See, it doesn't do too bad a job, actually. Just off, off to the default again. Um, this, again, will be a bit a lot harder doing using a, a point tracker workflow. But what I'm going to do really quick is I'll quickly just do a new project and don't save because I can come back to that nice and easy like you guys saw. I'll do the same with um, with the roto so I'll load this clip in and I'll just bring in the first uh, 25 frames and there we go. So for multiple shapes if I, if I did have this guy and I just draw a nice loose or fairly tight shape around here and just pull up there and pull up there and I'm going to add another spline over here for the window. And give it a second just to still getting lag. Sorry about that. And it's going to. You know, if, um, if you're having problems as far as Mocha goes uh, with lag, you can always adjust the amount of memory you're using inside of your preferences inside of Mocha Pro. I, I think in this case it's smoke. I blame smoke. Okay. It's, it's very much a, a resource hog. All right, fair enough. I just wanted to it's let you not, know. It's not a mocha thing. It's not a mocha thing. All right, well, you can also cache your files as well. It takes a little yes, front-loading yeah. time, yeah. but there you go. All right, so um, if these are the two shapes. Because we've got both cogs on, they'll both, um, they'll both be tracked. So I'm going to turn perspective. Actually, I don't need perspective because it's really X, Y. And I'll just toggle him, and he's at 90. I'll do the same for the other guy and just go 90, press Enter. And now I can, yeah. 
Usually the default minimum pixels that Mocha assigns is enough. Um, if you make a small shape, Mocha will bump it up to 90. If you make a large shape, Mocha will bump it down to 30. Um, usually that's enough to track it, but if you feel like your track is slipping, you can always up that number. All right. Let's, I'll, I'll see what happens. Perfect. I'm sure it's fine. Check through. And it's going all right. And again, this is uh, another thing to point out is this is tracking very nicely, and it's we're still at half res, which is... Quite amazing. Um, there we go. That's tracked nice and good. And again, so if we wanted to spit these out, we could uh, shift select those guys and go file, export shape data, and we'll choose GMask and selected layer. So let's see what happens. So this will be multi masks. I'm going to tab over to smoke, press escape, and I'll just quickly jump back here. And if we dive in, and load up this G-mask and go again down to the, the load menu down the bottom and we load in the multi-masks, we press F1 it looks like it's only bringing it across the one which is... Right, Ro, did we, um, did we export all when we went to our, export our shapes? So it's not, based, it's not based on the selection actually, if you go to your um, export shape data um, what you'll notice is uh, is that it will say either export selected shape or export all visible. You have to export all visible. Um, it's weird because it didn't give me, hang on one second. I'll just sure, no problem. Just put this back to defaults. No, no. You can also try just going to layout one or two or three and that should switch it. There we go. Um, so if I do uh, select either of these or say that one, Oh, you know what? I'm um I'm actually incorrect. Um, the G mask does not support multiple masks at once, so you'd have to do it one at a time and load them in. Thank you, Autodesk. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Um, again, I think it's um, I I I really hope soon that it, it'll be something that gets addressed with the new uh, G mask tool that eventually, hopefully, everyone comes to the party and meets. But yeah, um, unfortunately, G mask is based on old tech in that in that way. Um, so it is. It is very much a, a cumbersome process if you do have to spit it out like that. But yeah, unfortunately. Um, so I'll go back now, really quick, to our little ESPN lens distortion example and leave it at default and all over right. And I did that because I'm confident I'll be able to track it just as easy. So again, I'm just drawing a loose shape well outside the bounds and I'm just going to pull it out along here and there we are so again I'm going to turn on perspective crank it up to 90 and just track forward track forward now the other thing too is um, what I might do I'll just actually press escape for this just before this tracks through I'm going to first set up my lens distortion. So uh, just like uh, most things work, it's kind of, the first bit is kind of left to right. It feels like for me, like you would kind of check your clip stuff, then your lens, your track, just track. Uh, but then these last four are kind of their own modules over on the right. So I'm going to go to lens. And the first thing to note is I'm going to go locate lines. And you'll see it's it's looking and showing me as many lines as I want. I want to pull up the minimum line length to somewhere there, just where I get closer to shapes that I know should be straight. And I'm just going to press N on the keyboard, which stands for new line. I'm just going to click there and click that guy. So anything on that line that I know should be straight, I'm just clicking on. And now I'm going to press N again, do another one across here, and just for the sake of it, another one across here. And you notice the green line is straightening out. Like the green line is a straight line that it draws to the curved lines. Yeah, so it, it's giving us that update, telling us, yes, that, that should be straight. So that's, that's helpful, and I really like the, um, the way uh, Mocha does handle the distortion. So for this example, um, I'm just going to choose the one parameter. Um, I'm not going to use Calibrate Center, because I'm pretty sure that's more if you're used, uh, using a lens grid um, 
Yeah, it's also it's also if the center is off. Um, this this assumes that the center is not off and that it hasn't been cropped in a weird way. Um, okay. And you basically have to pick which sort of lens that you want uh, to define it as. Uh, your choices are single barrel, which is going to be a normal lens distortion, uh, two parameter, which is going to be your uh, your fisheye lenses, um, and then mm -hmm. anamorphic as well. And you be able to, you'll you're also able to load in ST maps as uh, as a lens tool if you've solve them in another Mocha file that uses the same camera or if you solve them in another piece of software that can render ST maps. That's handy. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm going to leave it at uh, one parameter and click calibrate. And by default, it looks like nothing's happened, but all we need to do is just click this little cog here, which will render this current frame. And again, this changes, that cog will change based on which module you're in as well. So right now it's for tracking, but because I'm in lens, this is associated with um, the distortion. So if I press that frame, Press that and render it. You see it's giving me an undistorted uh, frame. So you can toggle between those guys up here. So that's my source and then that's my undistorted footage. Um, and I'm purely using that right now as a way to preview whether I'm happy with the, the undistortion that's kind of working out. And I'm, I'm happy with that. So I'm not going to render it through. You could render it through and then export it as well. But I'm all about, um, again, trying to keep it in smoke and flame as much as possible, um, also within reason. So I'm going to go back to ESP and my main, my main thing, and now go back to track again. And again, I'm just going to track from where I left off. So I'm just going to go one frame before and just track forwards and give it a second. I still love how it just compensates for motion blur too. Yeah, it's well, it's it's because it just doesn't care, you know. It's just following that texture, and it even gives you a little bit of that warp that happens when the um, when the, the yeah. yeah from the the jelly the rolling, rolling shutter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's yeah, that's quite cool. That's total BS. That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> the only reason it can do that is because it's again tracking that texture, so it's looking at the entire texture as opposed to the corners. Yeah. All right, so now I'm just going to set up my grid again. So I'm just going to pull this over here just to test out the quality. And the other thing is um, because we've set up lens distortion, um, Mocha is compensating with the grid too for the distortion, which is quite cool. So we're getting a little bit of a, a barrel based on the corners as well. And that helps from a preview side of things as well. So I'll just pull this along here, and then I'm just going to scrub through. Well, it also, it's because the closer you get towards the edge of a shot when you're tracking, the more uh, warped your data is going to get. And if you don't compensate for that before you track, you know, you, uh, you end up with data that's completely incorrect. So a lot of times people yeah. will not know why their track doesn't line up, and it's usually because they have a, a distortion that they didn't notice. And that's, um, that's the best bit, too, is that uh, there is an option, too, um, for export tracking data, sorry, uh, which is to choose to remove the lens distortion, which is good as well. Yes. Which is what we're going to do for this one. Um, so I'm going to turn on remove lens distortion and click save. And this will be, uh, I'll call this lens, no distortion. Now I'll click save. Now the other thing I want to do because this is obviously, I need to apply a distortion uh, map now um, using UVs. So I'm going to go back to lens. And again, we already calibrated this. We know that it's doing not that frame, but the first frame, because again, we didn't render the whole way through. Right. We know that this is a good distortion um, that we've calculated from here. Um, so I'm going to go to export lens data. And for me, this is a really cool new, like, it's not new. Um, it's new enough. It's new enough? Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I, I really like this, because I remember in Monet, there was a lens option, and it was, it was like that, I think. Yeah. And I felt like, okay, the, what, what am I going to do with that? But yeah, this is way more practical now, the distortion map clip. So by default, it goes oversize. And for this example, I'm going to leave it at its oversize. Now, I've done a toot on this where it's showing uh, pretty much the way the matchbox filter that's used in Smoke and Flame, because again, Smoke doesn't have UVs by default inside of Action. Um, there's a little workaround you used to have to do where you'd match this res to your source res, but then you'd overcompensate your plate. But for this example, I'm happy to undistort it, and I'll show you why, because I'm, it's not going to be an undistort, redistort. It's just going to be 
uh, undistorted so it doesn't look as 5D kind of handheld uh, DSLR uh, type of camera. So yeah, I think it was shot on a GoPro. Yeah, well, there you go. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to leave it to, first thing is I'm going to choose undistort. Um, and again, you could render undistorted and then distorted if you want to do the, the, the in-out kind of workflow. For this, I'm just going to leave it at undistort. And I'm just literally rendering frame one. I'm going to leave on the dimensions that uh, Mocha's uh, kind of uh, used to compensate for the distortion in the UV map. And then I'm just going to go to my desktop and I'm going to choose to save it there. And I'm going to call this uh, distortion map and then just put a little UV on the end. And I'm just going to press save. And that didn't let me. Could be a permissions thing, which is. Yeah, it could be that you're trying to save it to a location that you're not allowed to write to. Let me see really quick. I'll just go to my desktop. Not that one. I have one that I already can, can toggle to, so. Sure. Uh, jump into smoke and control swipe over here. A lot of times if you end up with that write error, um, it's because what has happened is you've uh, unlinked or, um, or haven't relinked your results folder, uh, which is where all of your clips get saved. So if there's no place, if, there, if a place doesn't exist for it to save to, it will not be able to save. And the, that result folder is always um, based on where you bring it in the footage, right? Like where well, the footage is by default. There, by default, By but, default. You, but, okay, you can, yeah. but you can set an absolute path for it um, that will always stick your results folders into a place on your hard drive or an external drive. Uh, however you want to organize your shot, we allow you to do that. Okay. All right. All right. I'm going to open this guy up, which is our, our jelly lens stuff, and I'm just going to go straight into Connect Effects. And again, I'm going to go into, actually for this example, it will be loading in the UV map. So in my little bookmark over here, I have my lens and our UV map, which is the oversized sky. So I'm going to load that up. And now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to press M. And I'm just going to grab this matchbox. And this is available online. It's free at the Logic Matchbox area, where there's a whole bunch of free matchbox filters. But this one's specifically for UV mapping. So I'm going to click on that and click Load. And the first thing, if I double click on that, it's asking for the texture and then the map. So um, shift alt is our texture and then alt one more time, there's our map. I'm going to press F4 and you see it's undistorting, which is right. But um, right now we're losing res as well because it's taking on input one's resolution when, again, the map, because we're using UVs and it's pixel for pixel, we should be matching to the map. So I'll double click on that. And I'll change it to the same as input 2, and now it's compensated, and you see our res has changed on the right. And again, because this is going to be getting passed off and just not getting redistorted, it's not the mathematical correct way, but um, it's a way I'm happy to, to use for this example. So I'm going to put in the 2D transform, press F4, and now I'm just going to go to custom, and I know it's uh, 1280 and then 720 for height. And then it's actually a little bit oversized, so I'll just put it down to 98. And now we're in a good spot. So I'm going to go into action again. And I'm just going to load in that, go up one directory uh, to the desktop. And load in the, the Mocha frame again. And I'm going to set this up, so that's going to be my background. And then Control N, there's my input. And if I do the same thing and load up, and I go double click by linear and vertices and stabilizer and then go to load again and we go to I don't even think I exported it actually <laughs> there we go I'll just make sure so I'll go back to my layer into track and turn it back to ESPN and now I will go to export tracking data and this is where I will remove the lens distortion because now we're working with the removed uh, distortion so I'll save this and give it a second. Actually, that was my bad. It should be stabilizer data. I saved it as the point tracker data. So if that comes up, sometimes it won't actually show up in Smoke and Flame as well because it's, in a, it's meant for a different module. Um, that's my bad though. So I'll tab back here and I'll go save and I'll call this lens no dist. But you didn't check no distortion, so you need to resave it. Ah. <laughs> 
no problem. You're watching. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Okay. <laughs> All right, uh, lens, take five. There we go. So I have a question for you right quick. Um, are we going to be able to cover um, the 3D module as well? Because we've got about 15 minutes left. Um, yes. Yes, we are. Perfect. All right. So I'm just going to quickly tab back in and sort by name, lens tech 5, and return out, and press F4. And again, in this particular workflow, I would keep this like this because I wouldn't want to put it back to bubble footage. Um, it's not the true uh, undistort, redistort technique. That's covered somewhere else. But um, for this example, I, I like this because, again, this it's just easier and looks nicer for me when it's, again, it still has the, the jelly, but you can compensate that as well. But again, that comes through quite nice and is pretty, pretty transparent. And this is, for me, a really, really, really big thing because um, Especially in uh, CG workflows, these are these are great and uh, very much a necessity. Um, so again, that's where I'd comp it, and I would have left it as as is. Obviously, I would have you know because we got the tracking data, I would have turned on motion blur. Um, and just did a preview for that reason, and then the other thing too is because of the way the motion blur is handled for the last frame, I then would have as well made everything linear, and now that motion blur will calculate. A little bit nicer. What well, should if I go back, forward, preview? Okay, so it's it's doing this thing. All right. So with that said, let's um let's move on to the the three D module inside of uh, Mocha. Perfect. Sorry to rush you. I just I, I know we had a lot of people that wanted to see that, so I want to make sure we get to it. That's no problem. All right. Now, if I go over here to my little three D guy, I'm going to use um this guy, but the really, the first thing I'm going to use too, which um, I hope you guys find useful, um, it's to do with the 3D. But it's going over a shot we already saw, which is the dance recital one. I'm going to open that up and just repoint it to the footage, not the track one, but this guy. And I press OK. And so we're back here where you remember, where we got the nice track, and you know everything was doing what we wanted. Um, we can actually kind of trick Mocha in using this technique into uh, giving us a 3D camera solve for this. So with this layer selected and just going to camera solve, um, and I'm just going to leave it at auto. I'm just going to press solve. Um, now this, this technique from my, my kind of tinkerings doesn't always work. And I think the only reason this actually works in this particular example is because we have so much scale. And that, I think, helps uh, Mocha. Because usually if you have one plane, it, it, it freaks out and says, I need two, right? Um, yep. It could be because we have the, the, the two shapes within the spline and there's enough movement. But for whatever reason, it works awesome. So like you guys saw, it's just I've literally just gone to camera solve, select the, the layer that I wanted to participate in, in the solve. I think it's because it, Mocha actually thinks it's a zoom shot um, and a nodal camera, even though it's not. Whatever it thinks, so, it's, it's doing it right. So as long as it is a nodal camera um, and it's pan tilt zoom, it only needs the one the one layer. Uh, as long if you if you have parallax though, um, and it's different. then you need two, then you need okay. two non coplanar planes. Well then this yeah this example is um, actually quite handy then and should be used uh, in more ways. So the other thing to note in your export options, um, there's After Effects, there's FPX, there's FPX for Nuke, and there's hip, that hip film one. Um, I've been using this guy because it's been rock solid for me. Um, I think it's the one it's meant for, but either way, it's the, the 3dadata.fbx, and I'm going to click Save, put this on the desktop. I'm going to call this uh, 3D track now. Track, if I can spell. There we go. That's all right. I'm not worried about that. It's just complaining about some nulls. But I'm quickly going to tab over and then quickly go back to this example, and I'm going to open this up. And give it a second. Connect effects. Again, smokes doing its thing. Doing its thing. There we go. All right. Now for this, I'm going to just grab a new action, double click on it, and go to the action bin and go import. And if I go to the desktop, I said that. There's our 3D track, and I'm going to turn on auto fit in this to scene and load that up. And I press F4 um, and make that the background, the source footage, shift alt, and press F4. 
um, and then go to output and view the Mocha camera. By default, it looks like nothing's there. Um, and that's just a preview thing um, to do with uh, near and far clipping planes. So you see this needs to be higher. By default, um, for whatever reason, it's just lower. So I'm just going to pump that up to something stupid and then hold down Alt to zero it out and press 1 for near. And then if I press F4, now you can see we've got these nice, nice tracking points, sorry, nice um, axes. Um, and again, this is quite useful for, for me, I don't always like to corner pin. If I, have to, if I can, I'll avoid it. But this way is great because I can select that, go out here. Um, again, it's not meant to be a work of art. But I'm just going to put that guy in, press F4. And right now it's inverted, so it's easy just to, to flip it. And then I'll just scale it to 150. And if we press play, you see now we have a rock solid uh, source, like the source, it's the camera now that's moving. So our, if we have to manipulate anything and we go shift 4, you see what's happening with the camera is it's animating a, a zoom. Um, but again, this way can be quite useful because you could use perspective grid in here too to, to get this guy right. I just, again, it depends how you want to work. Sometimes there's no other option than bicubics and uh, corner pinning. Um, but if you can avoid it, this is cool because it's kind of an object tracking workflow just using a single track. Well, right, um, and this is very useful for particles, 3D titles, putting 3D objects into the scene, yes, you know, yes. um, just all of that stuff. And it's, and it's so fast, you don't have to worry about um, having to tell Mocha what's good, bad, uh, what's good oh. data and what's bad data. And that's it. And uh, again, because it's all based on the track quality, if the quality, you know, if the track's great, then you don't have to worry. And 90, 95% of the time it comes out perfect. So, Right. It's a real time saver. Right. Definitely. Because again, like trying to, you could, you could set that other shot up in a 3D tracker program, but... Uh, but why? It's not necessary. You, well, yeah. You, you, put, you put in a lot more work just to get that to to be somewhere where it could have been a lot, a lot easier and a lot quicker. Um, can you show how you would offset that object's position? Yeah, of course. Um, I'll just go up here. And so I'm in my dance recital one. Open. Connect text editor. So there it was. And if I go two up, um, by default, again, because we're in 3D space now, um, I just need to figure out where my, my Z's pointing. And I'll just quickly... It's not that way, and if I go, whoops, I'll just control click to zero that out. It's not Y. I think it will be X because, no, it'll be, it'll be in Z, so it'll be negative values in Z because we're flipped. So if I go forward, so that's going forward, and I scrub through and go shift 4. So obviously the scale's a little bit wacky-ish. Well, that's because it's not a true 3D um, track. The thing about uh, Mocha's planar tracker and Mocha's camera solver is it's actually solving for the plane. It's not solving for the camera that shot the footage in the first place. So the data is accurate for that plane, but it won't be accurate if you want to stick it anywhere else in the shot. That's why it's really good for titles and inserting you know, single ob objects or inserting particles, yeah, yeah. but it wouldn't be good for like a full set extension. Okay, yeah. Well, I mean, I wasn't complaining about Mocha. I was. I, oh, I know. Time, and I, a lot I'm of the time coming in, it's 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 troublesome just in general with FBX. Perfect. Yeah, I know, and I don't <laughs> think you are. What I'm saying, I'm just trying to explain to you why that is the way it is. Okay. All right. So so right now, there's my um, there's my little my axes. So there's the guy. I'm just in top view. So again, I'm selecting that which was parented to him, right? So he's the parent. He's the child. He's the child, and I can go pull in this view and then go F4 and then choose fit. And it's offsetting it in, if I pull back that way more, and keep pulling, and give it a while. So if I pull and then scrub through, again, because it's a, a very linear move and it's, it's, it's a cheat, it's not going to feel like it's forward, but I, I'll see if I can rotate it maybe, something like stupid like that. Again, it's because it's, it's, it's essentially like a dolly zoom even. It's just yeah. pushing in. So right. there's not much to kind of push forward from on this particular shot. But if you wanted to, in general, you could, again, just go to Shift 3 or Shift 4, and you could select that. And pending your scale was set up right, you could just pull forward and Z um, and offset. So would you recommend um, this as a workaround for the track data and using extended bicubal uh, data? So, um, I, I think in terms of, it depends what the shot is, like what's the shot 
kind of calling for. Like, um, I I always prefer to not uh, buy cubic things. That's just me, though. Um, I like it because I know I can set up a 3D scene and everything's in there, and you know, like it all lives there and it works. And but that's that's just me, though. Um, all right, so I'm going to go and load in the next guy, which is really quickly the beach shot, which is a nice tracking example. So I'm going to go to a guy over here and go media, 3D solver, and a beach shot. And I'm just going to load that up and press OK. And I'll just quickly change the last name and press OK. Now, I'm not going to, because I know we're running low on time, I'll just quickly. Obviously, it's, it's a pretty straightforward left to right. There's nothing crazy going on, but the main thing is there's lots of parallax in this shot, okay? Exactly. So you need two non-coplanar planes. So I'll quickly, I'm just going to show you guys where I, I got to with this, which was, and literally, you'll see it's, there's no kind of behind the scenes stuff happening. It's, it's really a, a straightforward track in this case. So I'm just going to go to um, my media again. And I might do that from the motor side, sorry. And I'll go open project, and I'll do um, 3D solver, and then it's the media one, sorry, and my big shot solver. Don't save. So you see, all I've done for this example is literally layer two, which is this guy here, right? And if I scrub through, it, it was I did zero intervention on the track, and literally just track forward. Um, layer one, which is the ground. And again, my, my track settings are just 90 in perspective for that. If I scrub through, so that's really the only thing that has perspective shift on the lines. Um, for these other two, uh, perspective was off because really it's just X, Y, and same with that guy. So this one is an example of just three, three separate shapes um, that we were able to solve um, for a camera move. So uh, I went to solve, and I'll, I'll try it again and see how it goes. I'm going to press solve. And I ended up getting like a 93%, which is pretty usable. So I'll give it a second to update. But again, the, the thing is, is it, it's, uh, for me, it's not a replacement to a, a 3D program, but it can be a lot quicker sometimes, um, especially when you're not needing to kind of go into scale and all that type of stuff. Um, thinking, what did I do before? I'll just quickly switch this. I think I had it at large parallax before. And I had these guys on, and I'll let's solve it. It's going a bit quicker. It's better. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. you can and always yeah. decrease your solve time by um, by either picking the focal length if you know it, um, yeah. or uh, or or tr basically uh, tracking less auto, layers. Auto just goes through everything, right? It yes. Just goes, maybe it's this. Maybe it's that. Maybe it's that. Yes. Yeah. All right. So, like you guys can see, I've got solve quality of ninety-eight percent, which is win-win. So I'm just going to go export camera data. And again, the FBX setting from before, I'm going to go save. And I'm going to call this uh, Beach FBX. And it'll be on the desktop. And I'm going to tab back into the smoke again and cancel out of that. And there's our, our same shot. I'm just going to copy that and go open in sequence. And I'm just going to remove the connect effects. So you see I painted out some stuff before, but I'm going to go effects, create connect effects. And again, it all comes through, and it's actually a lot more sensible, the scale I had from this one as well. So I'll go action bin, import, and I'll go to desktop, and it's beach FBX, and load. And straight away, you see scale looks a little bit more sensible too. Like if I go shift 4, see it's only a little bit further forward. I'm going to go output, again, change my result camera to the Mocha camera, and press F4. And if I scrub through, you see we've got some usable camera data. Now, there's, there's one other thing that always happens, and it's not a Mocha thing. It's a smoke thing, and it's a thing you always have to check. If you do select the camera and shift tab, you see by default, it's always like one frame off. If I go to uh, translate X and pull it over, and then, whoop, not three frames, sorry, it should be, I was on the wrong frame, there we go, so it should be back there, it, it always, you either have to slip it forward one frame, and it's just a, a smoke and flame thing, so now if I scrub through, you see these guys line up nice and easy, and again, like, um, the way you put in here, if I go Alt 2, um, so these guys come through again based on the shape that you drew with the, uh, the grid, 
the um, your actual corner pin grid, and then again, you always get the center piece. So it's actually uh, nice and usable. So again, I'm just going to jump out to show you one that I, I did just before. In some ways, it can be nicer than a straight-up camera um, track just because uh, the, the points make more sense as to where they are. The points, definitely. The points make more sense, and the best bit is um, because it's being tracked with the planar technique, um, you know, doing those points in, in a traditional program like, um, you know, synthize or TF match it or something, you, 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 it's very manual, and, and a lot of time, yeah, you're just guessing. There's no, it's just way more manual, and considering, you know, that, w that was, you know, a really easy thing to track, um, yeah, it just makes sense. So, so again, by default, this is one I did earlier, so I got my clean frame. Um, I've just done some paint, so if I go F1, F4 from the first frame, some really, really quick and nasty paint, and then I've just muxed it. So I've done a freeze frame, so it's just repeating frame one, and there's my loose, my loose G mask. It could be a lot nicer as well, but using that same, that same camera, again, if I go uh, Alt 2, and then press F4, you see I've just literally made, if I unpipe that, I've made I grabbed my center point, made my axes a child of it, which is just a white, a white image, and then using the, the smoke little hack of using a projector inside of smoke, I've made that a diffuse texture, and I'll just parent that, and made sure um, to show you guys how to do it again, because I, I copied it on the other frame. See, right now it's uh, looking for a camera to do projections off, but I know it's based off frame one, so I'm going to select that camera back click and go duplicate, there's my camera, um, and I know it's from frame one, so I'm going to go animation, shift tab, set key, keep, and now that camera is locked at that frame, which is exactly what we want for the projector, and we know it's camera node two, so I'm going to select that and change my mapping to camera node two, and now if I press F4, now we've got our projection that sets up and moves smooth um, from that sweet solid track we got, and again, like, you know, this is an example too where you wouldn't you know, because there are some nice remove tools as well in, in Mocha, but this isn't, this in particular spot isn't a, a prime candidate because it's going from left. Like, usually it's better with the remove module, right, for um, stuff passing in front, right? And you can track kind of on either side. Mary, or is that... I'm sorry, can you repeat the question? Um, like, say, say this clean plate where I've made it um, just at the, at the start here, where it's yes. on the wall. Yes. That, that, that wouldn't be suited towards Mocha's remove module. Mo the remove module is more when, it's, um, when something passes in front and you have tracking data on either side. Oh, no, you can totally, you can totally remove stuff off of a wall. Um, you just have to make sure that you have a clean plate. Um, in order to have a clean plate, you just have to paint a frame in Photoshop. Um, okay. You can always, you can do crazy stuff with the remove tool. I know, I've seen, I'm still, um, I'm still coming to terms with the remove tool. It's, it scares me in a good way. <laughs> It's the lighting, the lighting uh, modeling in the remove tool is pretty awesome. We're going to have to wrap this up pretty quickly, though. All right. Well, um, yeah, so that's, that's kind of where that is. And I'll just render this up and show you guys that the track works. Because that's what most people say is, does it play back? Right. You guys will probably not be able to see it because it will be about 12 frames per second by the time you see it. So trust me. When I Let's see it at speed. See? It's, it's working. It's not slipping. It's good. Awesome. All right. So that's 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 me. Was um? Do we have time for any questions or? Um. Well, let's see. Uh, we can take five minutes for questions, and I'll have run ten minutes over. But that's okay. Um. Does anybody have any last minute questions that we want answered before we close this out? You're getting a lot of compliments. You also got told you were dreamy, so that's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, he's joking, but it's fun. Um, as far as downloading the sources, unfortunately, we are not able to allow a lot of the sources to be downloaded because we get this footage from our clients. Um, so the most can, we can do is I show can demos. Give this one. But you can give this one. Perfect. I can give this one, and um, there's another one. Um, hang on, I'll just make sure. Uh, not that one. Not that one. Though. I can I can provide this one, and I've got some other. Um, other other examples I was trying, which are actually, um, I'd be cool if someone could figure out. <laughs> um, Perfect. Was, well, what we'll do is yeah. we'll load those. We'll load those onto our Vimeo page, and people can download them and play with them. Awesome. Um, 
and we have a question. If, uh, if I wanted 3D objects to follow points, um, would I also have to export the FBX data to my 3D modeling application so that both are aligned? Um, um, that, that, see, that's, that depends. Like, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, you could, if it was like a, a basic track, like um, I even got away with, um, I'll quickly show you um, this, this, this one, not the fillet one, sorry, this guy. I ended up doing originally a little track um, with the background. So you can track, if you have something that's the background and you can track it, and then you solve the camera just based off the camera movement, any other shape that you track comes through as a shape layer um, with its own animation. Right, Mary? Uh, yes. So yeah, as long as you solve, as long as you solve the camera movement itself, um, you're, you're in a good place by default. Yeah, so as long as, as long as you have the camera, you should be able to put it in. Um, now, as far as getting the 3D data into Smoke and Flame from another 3D application, you'd have to make sure that your world lined up um, and that your units were the same. Um, you wouldn't want to, like, have a file set up uh, with a different sort of setup and then try to load that into Smoke and Flame and expect it to line up perfectly. Yeah, because that's, that's always a dance, because with that, um, we're always going from real, real world units to pretty much pixels, so yes. it's always... It's always fun. Yeah, that's always a hairy thing. Well, um, all right, I think we're going to wrap this up. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. You did a wonderful job. And again, uh, I want to sort of go over some things right quick. Um, you guys can find more information on Mocha, um, and you can download a trial that's two weeks, completely unlocked. You can use it on shots if you want. Um, in fact, we recommend that you try it out in your pipeline. Maybe not when you're on a deadline, though. Um, and uh, go to www.imagineersystems.com, and you can download a free trial there, download demos, uh, keep up with us, and you can also go to our Facebook. We have a Twitter. We have a LinkedIn um, group. We have a G Plus group. So make sure that you, um, that you follow us. And again, Joel, do you want to plug your websites as well where you have your wonderful free tutorials? Are they free? Uh, they're free, but yeah. uh, I'm, I'm done with the plug. I'm just, um, I hope you guys really enjoyed it and found it useful. All right, perfect. Well, thank you so much, and you have a wonderful day. Thank you.